It might be enough to have a single national leader, just one, who understands what is actually going on in this country and is brave enough to say so. That might make all the difference, and it would certainly make the political career of the person who does it. In the fall of 1968, a teaching assistant at San Francisco State University called George Murray gave a speech endorsing racial violence. Murray urged black students to bring guns to campus and, quote, kill all the slave masters. Murray, by the way, was the, quote, minister of education in the local Black Panther Party, which was the Antifa of its time. When administrators learned about Murray's speech, they equivocated, but ultimately they suspended him under pressure. In response to this, a group called the Third World Liberation Front shut down the campus. Sound familiar? They demanded the university drop all admission standards for black applicants and admit students purely on the basis of race. Administrators were paralyzed in the face of this more than anything they didn't want to be called racist. The university's president was so terrorized by it that he quit and left. Ultimately, the leadership of San Francisco State fell to an unlikely president, a Japanese-Canadian academic called S.I. Hayakawa. Hayakawa was short, eccentric, wore thick glasses, but he was completely fearless. On December 2, 1968, Hayakawa marched into the middle of a student protest. Rioters immediately assaulted him, but Hayakawa kept going. He climbed onto the roof of a sound truck and ripped the wires out of the loudspeaker. San Francisco State University reopened that day. So here's the lesson for today's office holders. S.I. Hayakawa became a folk hero for standing up to the mob. He was elected to the United States Senate from California. Republicans supported him. Voters did, too. They didn't always understand him. Hayakawa wore a Scottish tam o shanter cap in public and never really explained why he did. But it didn't matter. He was brave and honest, and voters appreciated that above all. They always do. We don't have our Hayakawa yet. Instead, we have cowards. Our leaders are happy to talk about everything but the collapse of the centuries-old civilization tumbling down around them. They have no idea how little credibility they have. They have no sense of how irrelevant they have become. If you can't tell the truth when the truth actually matters, then nothing you say matters. Meanwhile, Black Lives Matter becomes more powerful and more popular with the public. Why is that happening exactly? Here's why. Because Black Lives Matter is getting exactly what they want. And that is the most basic sign of strength. Strength is the most appealing quality to voters and to people and to animals. Three weeks ago, Black Lives Matter demanded that cities defund their police. Today, the mighty NYPD, the biggest police department in our nation, the most sophisticated police department in the world, bowed and announced it is abolishing its entire plainclothes division, 600 people, gone for good, because Black Lives Matter wanted it done. And now it is done. That's not bluffing. It's not posturing. It's not tweeting. That is real power. You'll notice it did not require the usual maneuvering for Black Lives Matter to get that power. They didn't need a team of lawyers to get it. Black Lives Matter doesn't make legal arguments. They're not trying to convince you of anything. Black Lives Matter believes in force. They flood the streets with angry young people who break things, and they hurt anyone who gets in the way. When they want something, they take it. Make them mad, and they will set your business on fire. Annoy them, and they will occupy your downtown and declare a brand new country. You're not going to do anything about it. They know that for certain. 